how much paper do I buy? If you follow my advice, your paper stocks will look far healthier, but you will need to have a strategy to keep your stocks low, but your customers satisfied. Test your inkjet paper supplier's ability to supply paper. How long does it take from online order to paper arrival? If you are lucky enough to have a next day service, and incidentally, you've got to make sure you're aware of their cutoff time for online order dispatch. Our cutoff time is four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, UK local time. You will be able to fully implement a just-in-time buying policy. Apart from your paper stocks needed to satisfy your same-day service requirements, you can keep your stock holding very low. If your supplier arrival time is longer, simply allow an extra buffer stock in-house for the most common papers and production sizes. Remember, your oversized paper stocks can always be cut down for emergencies, but remember to restock your oversized papers at the first opportunity. If your present supplier gives you a sporadic or unreliable service, you must have a conversation with them, and unless they're able to improve, you should end your relationship with this provider. Your own reliability is at risk if you don't. Professional Photographic Inkjet Paper Guide. There are eight main categories of inkjet paper used in professional photographic printing. We have gloss, satin, pearl, matte, fine art smooth, fine art textured, burrito and canvas. Now let's look at this chart which gives you the essential features and pros and cons of each type. Now when we look at the the photo black and the MK column this assumes that we're using a pigment ink set and we have the choice of either applying photo black or matte black to our papers. If we're printing with dye based inks we can ignore this column. So basically, basically if you're looking at pigment inks you must use the appropriate black in your ink set. Photo black will give you a good rich black on gloss, satin, pearl, glossy burrito and glossy canvas. Matte black will give you a good rich black on matte, matte fine art and matte canvas finishes. If you get this wrong you will only ever achieve a dark grey in your black areas and you will lose definition for your colour. Now dye or pigment. Now I'm being controversial here most modern photo inkjet papers are suitable for both dye and pigment inks. But if you're a professional printmaker, you must be aware of a serious problem which still exists when using pigment inks on gloss papers. Pigment inks tend to subdue the gloss level on a gloss paper. And if you look at your finished print at an angle, you may notice a slight differential of sheen which is bronzy. You can get rid of this by applying a coat of Marat Print Guard, but this is not a perfect answer. Many professionals produce their high gloss prints using dye based inks. Satin, pearl, matte or textured finishes don't have this problem, so are perfectly suited to pigments. High production print applications rely on your ability to feed your paper stack automatically through your printer. Most production single sided papers will feed easily. Double sided papers usually have too much interleave friction to allow much more than two or three prints at a time in the stack. So when you're printing you have to keep adding to that tiny little stack of prints in order to have some form of production. Now fine art papers usually need individual printing, one sheet at a time, and many printers have a special paper path 
for fine art paper. I, I do recommend that you use it. So when you're considering your different papers, you ought to consider whether you're going to auto feed. In the case of uh, archival mat, we have a, a, a double sided version and a single sided version nowadays, specifically for those customers that want to uh, perform high volume uh, print runs and then they would tend to go for the single sided uh, paper if they uh, if the job can uh, uh, can uh, can accommodate that now in most production papers and uh, my definition of a production paper is gloss satin pearl or matte we should look for a clean white in the base color if your existing paper does not give you a clean crisp white you will be unable to achieve good clean highlights and the whites of your picture will appear subdued and jaded. Good quality photographic inkjet papers do not rely on artificial optical brighteners or white enhancement additives which are detrimental to their archival ability. We simply buy the absolute best German uh, 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 papers who do not have to have to uh, 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 rely on these enhancements. Creamy whites are acceptable in certain fine art and burrito finishes, where a particular feel to your finished print is required. But at any other time, always insist on a clean white base color. It's surprising how many top brands of inkjet paper do not give you a clean white. Check this out on your existing stocks of paper. I find it impossible to create a good punchy colour or mon monochrome print without the ability to achieve a crisp, clean white. Now in this guide, I've avoided making any detailed descriptions of each paper because, to be honest, you really can't tell by somebody telling you these things. You really need to find out for yourself. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to print test your papers from your favorite supplier. Marat and Marat USA send out sample test packs of uh, test papers with every first order, which enables you to constantly test and evaluate color accuracy, density, neutral, white point, skin tone, etc. Get your favorite test image and print this image out on each paper. Decide which papers you like and then get us to carry out a free custom printer profile. See our next lesson on color management and process control to help you to achieve perfect color and black and white prints. And you will be able to constantly monitor your print accuracy over time. So the most important qualities of a professional photographic inkjet paper is that it must carry a coating which allows the ink to dry instantly, become waterproof, create a hard, durable, scratch-resistant top layer, to allow the sprayed out ink to generate discrete micro dots which appear to form smooth graduations of color and black and white, we need to accurately emulate the color response curve of the sensor which captured the image in the first place, which means to say we have to be able to create in our print exactly what we captured in our digital camera or what we captured in our scanning equipment. Number six, we need to be able to prevent any migration of the chemical makeup of the base paper into the active image layer. This is very important for archival ability. We need to be able to produce a print that we can confidently sell. Many other qualities which inkjet chemists specify when formulating each ink. I've spent many years with uh, inkjet uh, chemists and the number of, uh, the number of uh, issues 
that must be dealt with when you're dealing with the correct combination of ink and paper. It, 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 it's, it's a numerous number of issues that they need to deal with, which we can't go into uh, 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 briefly, as you can imagine. And finally, the print must look and feel like a true professional photographic darkroom print. That, in my view, is the most important single factor of what we're, what we're doing here. We must produce something fabulous. Now, inkjet paper do's and don'ts. Hopefully, we're going to cover here um, any of the, 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 the little issues, that uh, the little mistakes that I think we've all made over the years. Now, the first issue is we must never leave our inkjet paper open to the atmosphere for too long. Our inkjet paper is basically, but uh, they're basically a, a material that is made up of uh, there's there's a, a quite a, a an appreciable water content, and we must preserve this water content. And the way to preserve it is as soon as we finished with our print job, we replace the papers back into the box and make sure we put the lid back on the box. We, number two, we must never leave, the, uh, in, never leave paper in the printer feed tray after a print run. I think we've all done it. We've left paper overnight in the printer feed tray. Now, this is not good uh, practice. Not only do we compromise the moisture content, but overnight, a rain of dust can come down onto the paper surface, and then the following day, we feed the first sheet of paper through into the printer, and where does that dust go into? It goes straight onto our platen rollers, which reduce the, fraction, the friction of the platen rollers and prevent good feed characteristics. So that's really important. Never leave the paper in the printer feed tray overnight, always shut down that top little flap on the top of your printer. Number three, always keep your paper boxes closed, preserve the moisture content of your paper, and of course, keep out dust. Number four, keep your papers totally dust free. Number five, remove surface fibers from fine art papers before printing. I know a lot of professional photographers and fine art printmakers who have a large camel hair brush by the side of their printer specifically to dust off the fibres fresh out of the, uh, when you take the paper straight out the box, the first thing you do is you brush off the fibres from, um, from your paper. You won't be able to see anything, but it's just to be absolutely certain that there's no loose fibres are going to enter into your printer. Number six, if your, if your paper does not lay flat on the desk, don't use it. Now this is really important for us, uh, uh, this is a, a reason not to use old papers that are starting to curl. If you've got a curly paper, what will tend to happen is you'll put it into the printer, the paper could curl up and actually touch up underneath the print head as it's going left and right across the paper. This is not a good thing to happen. So if your, if your paper does not lay flat, don't use it. What I tend to do is cut it up for other things. If it's a, if, if it's a smaller paper, then the, then the paper then does tend to lay flat. Uh, the seventh, uh, seventh issue here, fan your paper before putting a stack into the printer uh, for the best feed characteristics. You're fanning the paper to put air into the gaps between the papers and you'll find that the printer will, uh, will auto feed much better when you, when, you fan your, uh, when, when, when you fan out your stack of paper. Number nine, uh, don't use out of date papers on production jobs. Always use fresh stock. Number 10, Keep the platen rollers of your printer dust free by regularly blowing through, either by a dust off or with your mouth. You simply blow through across the top down into the printer before you start a print run. That's always a good, I think it's a good, uh, good, uh, good practice. Number 11, uh, try to develop a small 
in stock range of production papers which you have custom printer profiles for. I think it's really important that we match our papers with our custom printer profiles and then you're confident that you can print out on all the various stock papers that you have. And finally, regularly check your custom profiles for accuracy on your popular paper finishes. A lot of people forget to do this. Now if you find that any of your custom printer profiles do not give you excellent colour and black and white accuracy, don't hesitate in getting your supplier to reprofile your paper. Now I know that that's what we will do for you. We're very, very keen for all of our customers to have all of their various Marit papers correctly custom profiled so that at any time they can produce fabulous work no matter whether it's gloss, whether it's satin, whether it's fine art or matte, any of the papers you should be supremely confident of producing brilliant colour and excellent black and white. Now you must have noticed by now that I always refer to custom printer profiles. I never talk about generic ready-made printer profiles. My opinion on this is that nowadays with constantly changing operating systems, printer drivers and various versions of image editing software to achieve pure <clears throat> to achieve true professional photographic color and black and white accuracy, you must have a small library of up-to-date custom profiles. Generic or canned profiles are simply not good enough. There are too many variables out there nowadays. Not only must you have custom profiles, but you need to test them when they are created and then regularly check them over time. In the next lesson, lesson four, color management and process control, we will learn how to use very simple color management to achieve professional photographic standards of color and black and white accuracy with smooth tonality and dynamic range to rival a traditional darkroom photographic print. We will also learn how to monitor your print output regularly so that you are always ready for a high quality print job. I will show you an old fashioned way of making your monitor as accurate as it can be. We will learn of the problems encountered in the modern world of color printing software and how we get around this in the real world of production color printing for profit. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. See you next time.